All right, so I'm going to be showing how to open up and disassemble this Lenovo IdeaPad 3 15iil05. All right, so we're going to be using a GIS-1 screwdriver to remove all the screws from the bottom. You do want to keep them in order because they can be different size, shape, and length. The way I do that is I put them flat side down like that on my desk in the pattern and I remove them. So you got three here, three here, and then four down here. Okay, so let's go ahead and remove all these screws. If this video helps you out, please make sure to like, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. And if it helps you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. All right, so other than that, let's go ahead and continue removing all these screws. Oh, um, if you can't contribute to the channel that way, um, it would help a lot if you could watch a few of my other videos um, because that tells the YouTube algorithm that my channel is um, kind of pulling in some interest and people are kind of either enjoying or bene benefiting from it. I mean, I guess usually it's more for entertainment, but hopefully people will watch this that need it. All right. Anyways, let's get all these screws out. Then we're going to go ahead and open up the laptop. So you just open it slightly like this. The way I open this is I'll get my fingernails in the gap there, okay? And then on the back, on the palm rest, you'll push there while you pull, okay? Just like this. You don't wanna push on the palm rest there. You're just gonna skip over that and then work your way down this side, okay? And there you go. You can see we popped all that up. So we're gonna slowly, carefully close that. Um, you can see this casing's kind of I don't know why, but it's broken here. The customer brought in two of these same exact laptops, and they're both kind of falling apart, like breaking, so it's kind of strange. Anyways, I'm sliding my fingernail down the side gap there and pulling on it. Um, obviously, you don't need to use fingernails. You can use plastic pry tools if you want. I actually cut my nails um, too short, so it's a little bit more difficult than usual. But normally, I would... Whoa, that thing's cracking. i got to be careful there. All right, but... Usually my fingernails would be longer and then this would be a lot easier. So, all right, there we go. So we'll work our way down here and there we go. Okay, so here we go. The back, if it's clipped, you might have to kind of pop that up and kind of wiggle it and pop it out like that as well. But there we go. Um, I don't know why this thermal pad fell off there, but usually it sticks to this copper piece, I would think. All right, and yeah, so we got inside. It's pretty dusty. So I am going to have to clean this up. It looks like there's some RAM soldered to the motherboard or logic board there. And then you got an actual stick of RAM here that's removable. Uh, first thing we're going to do, because I don't know if this is on or not, uh, because the screen's not working, um, we are going to go ahead and disconnect the um, battery. Okay, so let's go ahead and remove the battery screws. All right. And then once we disconnect the battery, I am going to open up the laptop, press and hold the power button for at least 15 seconds, and then, um, well, to drain the residual power, and then I'm going to go ahead and clean all this dust out here because it's really dusty. All right. So it looks like there's four screws holding here. So one here, one here, and then one up there and one down there. Okay, so to remove the battery, once you get all the screws out, you got to lift it up to get them over these little raised pegs and then slide it over this way because this battery um, thing is kind of stuck there um, and there we go all right then what I do is I get my hand underneath pinch with one finger on the cable and one with the other and then pull it back just like that so basically pulling it out like this with my finger on both sides okay if you need battery model information battery is L19L3PF5 okay that's the battery and there's the CMOS BIOS RTC real-time clock battery here. Um, if you need replacements for these, I actually have a um, supplier that kind of gives me some deal on this. Um, I don't know if it'll be cheaper than other places, but um, you can check and see. All right, they got the connector here with the wings that you can kind of grab that, wiggle it, and pull it out. Um, they actually sent me some batteries to, if I need to replace them, I got some samples. Um, <clears throat> but yeah. All right, anyways. Uh, let's, I guess let's do a close-up here. You got the keyboard connector here. There's a flip latch back here that you flip up, then you can pull it out. Touchpad trackpad connector here. Flip that latch up. You got an M.2 PCIe NVMe SSD here, but it's only this short one. If you want to use the full size, you do have to use 
um, connect the screw over there and you do need to migrate there's a little bolt there that goes into the screw mount um, you do need to get that out so and then screw that into here okay um, you got this board for the SD card slot as well as the one key recovery button You can push that with a pin or a needle or a folded out small paper clip um, That lets you go into the BIOS recovery mode and other things You also have the headphone jack or auxiliary jack there 3.5 millimeter That's on its own separate board connected to the motherboard with this cable with the flip latch kind of lock there You have the speaker connected to there as well Then the cable runs along and goes to that speaker there All right, you got the wireless card here to remove that, you can go from the tail to pop these antennas out, and then there's a JS1 screw. It pops up slightly at an angle, you can pull it out. Same thing with the M.2 PCIe MVMe SSD. I don't want to mess with it though, uh, because the only thing we are messing with is the screen. You also have a stick of RAM here. All right, we'll show you this. We don't need to do the battery power drain for that, but if we're going to mess with this green cable up here, we do need to do that. All right, the RAM pops up like that, you can pull it back. And this is a PC4 3200 AA stick of RAM. I'm assuming this is also 4 gigs that's built into the motherboard. Usually it's best to have matching sticks of RAM, but you can't really do anything about this soldered RAM. Uh, unless you have like some special soldering skills and tools and stuff to do that. So yeah, at that point you might as well buy a new computer. Um, but yeah, unless you're just wanting to do a fun project or something and messing around. Um, but anyways, you can buy 8 gigs or 16 gigs pretty cheap, and you can actually use that if your computer goes super slow. Um, then if you want, you can do that, but uh, it's not going to run properly in dual channel mode if you do mismatching sticks like that. All right, you got the um, LCD LVDS cable here, and then you have this connector going into most likely like the microphones and the camera, or if there's touchscreen, possibly, but um, yeah. You also have the fan connector here. Um, the fan's pretty gross, so I'm gonna actually take these screws out to move it back a little bit, just so when I blow it out with the air blower, electric blower, um, I can kind of get the dust clump out easier because most likely it has a built up like pile of lint all right so we'll get that out we got those three screws and hopefully it moves normally you'd have to unroute all these cables but i'm just gonna want to move it a little bit enough that i can have access in here a little bit better okay so i'm not actually gonna take that out all right anyways let me go dust this stuff out and then i'll be back so i'll see you guys in a bit and yeah we should be back with a much cleaner less dusty laptop all right see you guys then all right so i'm back we clean this out as you can see much cleaner a lot less dust all right so anyways we already disconnected the battery set it aside let's go ahead and carefully open this up you want to be careful because the hinges have one less screw i like to get underneath with my thumbs in between and then hold down so that i'm pulling up the hinge and then the screen I'd have to either have someone hold it or I use my body to push against the screen to prevent it from moving. And there we go. All right, we're going to press and hold the power button for 15 seconds to drain any residual power. This makes it a lot safer to work on and is very important when messing with the screen LCD LVDS connector. Okay, so we're going to see we're probably going to have to pop out the um, bezel here. So I don't think I can do that without removing the entire screen assembly. So I guess let's go ahead and take out the um, and wireless antennas and everything. Okay, so let's zoom in here. We're going to go into the wireless card and remove the antennas. Again, usually you just go from the tail and pull straight up. The gray one is being pointed to by the white arrow and the black one is being pointed to by the black arrow. Okay, so just go under like that and pull it up. All right, and then get under there and pull it straight up. All right, and keep in mind that it's not always the case where the black wire is going to the black um, arrow or the and the white arrow is going to the gray wire. Um, sometimes they switch it around. Anyways, we're going to disconnect the fan connector. Just grab, again, the connector. I use my fingernails at the wings and just keep wiggling it. And it should eventually pop out. Just keep wiggling, wiggling, and slightly pulling. I might have to use my other finger to do this. So like that, and there we go. All right, then we can go ahead and let's zoom out a little. And we will... Oh, I'm these. <coughs> Jeez. Okay, then unroute the cables from here. Okay, just like that. 
gonna unroute it from the fan just like this. Okay, get that out, get these out, and we'll get this out as well. Okay, there's the fan. So if for some reason you need a replacement fan, um, you probably just search up the laptop model and fan, but uh, there's this DC28000 F3F0. There's also DFS5K121154941M. All right. And I don't know what the EP, if that, I don't think that's part of it. But anyways, we'll set the fan aside. Um, then we're going to go ahead and unroute the cables from here and over here. Be very careful with these because if you damage these, it's a lot of times you can't even find replacement ones. So be very careful. Okay, we're going to go over here. We're going to disconnect the LCD LVDS connector, flip that latch up. Then usually you got to pull up slightly on this and then pull it back. Okay, so pull up slightly and then pull it back. There we go. And this connector seems okay, so I don't know. It's just completely black. Anyways, we're going to go ahead and get this connector out. So just grab that and wiggle that. And then we're going to kind of pull this and get that out. Okay. So there's four screws holding the laptop screen in place uh, with the hinges. We're going to zoom out here. And then we're going to carefully open this thing all the way. Oops happening I accidentally tapped something I didn't mean to give me a second I'll be back all right I'm back sorry about that let's go ahead and carefully open this thing up again I push my thumbs here and get my fingers in and I'm gonna open this about 90 degrees they put a sticker on there but anyways I'm gonna open that to basically about 90 degrees and then have the screen hanging over the edge of my desk all right completely straight but there we go close enough all right we're going to remove the two screws here and the two screws here keep track of them all right and then hopefully we can get to the screen all right so this one the screen doesn't come on at all in some cases it might be a loose cable oh no the hinge or the screw mechanism under here is broken so i don't know if i'll be able to get this screw out we'll find out and we'll get this one out okay so when it's broken like that i have to have a way to kind of pry this up to try and get the more pressure against the thing um, let's see if we can do that i'm going to use a small flathead screwdriver here and try and get underneath between the screw but uh it's looking like this one is held in super strong so I don't know if we'll be able to get that out because it's underneath a moving metal piece here. So I don't know if I'll be able to get the flathead screwdriver in there. Um, let's try and turn this a little bit as I push this in. Nope, it's not working. Come on. It wiggles a lot, so it feels like there should be some room there, but there isn't. Let's see if we can get it underneath the hinge itself. if I can get that in there. Um, I'm going to try with another screwdriver. I'm going to try with the handle attached to it and maybe that will help. Okay. Feels like it's wedged under there. So I guess I'll have to use another screwdriver handle to try and undo the screw while I'm holding that in place. I know it zoomed out quite far but I can't really, I can't really zoom in more for this. And I don't think that's going to work. It doesn't want to go completely underneath there. It feels like it's going in a tiny bit, but not really enough to take this out. Okay, it's going in. Perfect. All right. Oh, not quite. There we go. Okay. So as you can see, as I was raising that up and unscrewing it, it finally came out. So 
Let's go ahead and let's put the screw away. There we go. All right, now that we got that, we should be able to lift the whole screen up. And there we go. So here's the entire screen assembly here. Um, I don't know how you can fix that because it's underneath this metal piece here. So, I don't know. You might be able to access it by removing this whole piece here. Um, but the problem is the customer wants this back kind of like the same day. And the epoxy and stuff I use takes too long to set. But let's see if we can lift this up a little and take a look. Um, I'm too... I don't want to have to remove all that stuff. So, let's go ahead and get this thing out. It's already like 11 o'clock, so... All right, so we'll get that piece of stuff out. You can actually see the power buttons underneath here. Um, so that board is actually also with the power button on it. So yeah, the power button is part of this board. So if you needed to replace the power button, you just gotta replace this board. <coughs> okay, so yeah, I don't know. I'd have to put like some JB Weld or something in this hole underneath on the side while I'm kind of like having it screwed in. So I guess we'll figure that out later. Uh, for now, we need to check if we can remove the screen from here and transfer it over. All right, did I? Oh, I need to put this screw back in for now. All right, so we'll set this guy aside. And let's go ahead and see what we got here. Um, this screen doesn't light up at all now, so let's zoom out. We probably have to slide this plastic piece off. I'm not 100% sure if it's a sliding mechanism or clips, but let's see if we can, okay, it looks like it slides. So we slid it over that way, and then we should be able to pop this out. And there we go. All right, so that's how it looks. Um, it's kind of weird because it's pretty loose. Let me see if I try and put it back here if I slide it back it's pretty loose but it, it like it holds but for some reason it like wiggles very easily now that's strange all right I don't know if something in here cracked or what um, but anyways we're gonna brush this off because we don't want the dust in there okay so okay and also keep in mind there's this flat side here the shorter flat side goes down towards the bottom of the screen and then the longer um, diagonal one goes up towards the top if you take that out and forget okay so we got that out next thing we're gonna do we gotta get this whole cable out here oh I see there's some broken plastic bits here yeah I don't know what happened why there's broken plastic bits there but we'll take that out I think this probably this laptop design or something is old because a lot of the plastic and stuff on it is cracked. Yeah, there's a few like broken plastic pieces here. So we'll get those all out. Come on, can't crack this one. There we go. <clears throat> Alright, so there's those three pieces that were broken off. So next thing we're going to do, we got to get this piece off here. So it does look like it's held in with some adhesive. So you do got to be careful when kind of peeling this up or lifting it up. It looks like it's going to peel up the entire screen. I don't know if you can see, it's moving the entire LCD panel. I'm using my fingernails under there, um, but you might want to use some really thin pry tools, I don't know. but. Let's go ahead and start with the side. You can see that came out pretty easily. So I basically just rotated it like that and then push it towards the center. Okay. I wonder if this one, maybe they dropped it or something and the cable internally came loose. Actually, okay, no. I actually see a crack on this LCD. So hopefully this one will actually be repairable after we replace this. Okay, so we're peeling this up. You can see it's coming out. And usually you gotta kind of pull up towards the center or from the center. Uh, I gotta be careful because there's all the screws here. I'm gonna end up like knocking them all over. 
but uh, usually you peel up from the center and then push inward, so like rotating it like that. Okay. Just like that, and there we go. Okay, there we go. And you do want to somewhat go kind of slow, don't rush it because there's some adhesives here. All right, and as you peel, you can actually hear the adhesive peeling up. Okay. You hear that? I don't know if you can hear it. Come on. There we go. Make our way over. Okay. Ouch. Man, having no fingernails sucks. I don't know how people can function without having any fingernails. They're very useful. <laughs> All right. Anyways, we'll go this way. Using plastic pry tools sucks. I don't know how people can prefer doing that. <laughs> All right. Anyways, we'll go down this way. You can hear the adhesive peeling up. And we'll just continue working our way down, going very slowly. Technically, the LCD panel is already broken, so if you break it more, it's not really a big deal. We are replacing that, or at least that's the plan. Again, I don't know because this one just stays completely black. If they fried the backlight circuit or something as well, you can actually see the adhesive coming out here. Okay, all this adhesive isn't really necessary usually because they have all these clips holding it in place. But uh, if you want, you could go ahead and add some double stick adhesive back to it. All right, so peel that up and there we go. All right, so we got that out. We're gonna go ahead and peel this adhesive off because it's kind of like separating weird. If you want, you can use it, but I'm just gonna peel it all out. So you can kind of stretch it and you can see it releases as you do that. Um, but this adhesive stays stretched out, so keep that in mind. If you plan to reuse the adhesive, then you might want to just cut off the excess that's coming out weird. <clears throat> Alright, any double stick adhesive should work though. Okay, you can kind of see they have all these little clips down here. Um, and then there's also a little magnet here, so if for some reason it's not detecting the screen closing, it might be this magnet is missing. Alright, we're going to set that aside. Okay, next thing. This is kind of wobbly, so let's check and see if these screws are at least tight. Okay, they seem to be... Oh, that one's a little bit loose. That one's very loose. And that one's very loose. I'm going to use some red thread locker there because I don't want those screws coming loose. That could cause the hinge to break, and then we're going to have some issues. So we're going to use some thread locker here. This is Loctite 262. Um, they have all different types. Um, usually you want to avoid using super permanent types. <clears throat> this one's kind of semi-permanent, not really completely. <clears throat> and with these screws being so small, um, usually it doesn't hold on that strong. So that's what we're using. Okay. All right. Just want to make sure these screws don't come loose because then the hinge can break. not to clamp down the cable with the screws. Okay, there we go. Oh, this screw mount's actually broken. It actually keeps spinning, so it's not too good. There's a random QR code sticker here. That means this hinge is probably going to end up breaking, but anyways, we tightened those other screws, so hopefully it will be okay. Yeah, these screws are like super loose. Oh, this one's actually also broken. So, bad design. Okay, tighten that down completely. Yeah, a lot of these screws are actually like, these screws are all loose. 
Bring that up. Coming out super easily. Oh. Alright, last one. Alright, put the Loctite thread locker stuff away. Don't use super glue here, okay? Because you don't want it to be permanently set in there. Okay, anyways. <clears throat> Now that we got those in, um, the screen doesn't look like anything is holding it in place, so let's see if we can actually pop it out from here. Oh, actually, okay, I was wrong. It has stretch release adhesive tabs up here. So these things, what you gotta do is you gotta grab them and then pull them straight back. It helps to use, like, tweezers or pliers to get in there. So I'm gonna get in there with these needle nose pliers. You see this black tab here and we're just gonna pull on it so you gotta pull it straight back don't pull it up you want to pull it straight towards yourself this way okay and you want to go slow don't go too fast because if it tears you're gonna be screwed all right so then usually I'll let it go then grab closer okay all right so after you stretch it then you grab oops the stretchiness is pulling it then so keep it stretched out and then grab closer then you can let go here to kind of let it stretch back in and then you can continue um, if you can uh, try and reuse these because a lot of times it's hard to get a hold of these stretch release at um, uh, adhesive strips so usually I try and reuse them if I can um, if for some reason it breaks um, you could always just use a double stick regular double stick adhesive um, but you'll want to use less and keep in mind that if you ever need to take the screen out You're probably gonna end up breaking the screen because those adhesives um, It's harder to remove them without Damaging anything if you use like smaller amounts you can probably use like a little rubbing alcohol to release them But uh, these ones as you can see you just keep stretching it and there we go. Okay, so we'll set that aside for now I'm just gonna stick it somewhere up and have it like dangling down all right <clears throat> then we're going to go ahead and do the same thing over here. Again, you can use pliers or tweezers, whatever works for you. Then you just grab this, and same thing, we're just going to grab it and pull it straight back. Okay, just like that. Grab closer, let go here, and then continue. And grab here, let go again. And then same thing, continue, and you just keep repeating this process like the other side until you get the entire adhesive strip out. It helps to kind of keep a slight grip on it when you're pulling it um, with your other hand, so that way um, if it does snap out, then you can grab it. See, just like that, it kind of like snapped forward, so you grab like that, and there we go. All right, there's the second one. Right, we'll set that aside as well. Okay, so now that we got all of that out, we should be able to lift the screen out. Let's flip this back over. We're gonna go ahead and lift this up here, tilt it towards ourselves, and let's see here. Okay, this cable is a little bit short. We're gonna have to like tilt the whole thing up and then lean it forward this way. And we're gonna now, there's a latch here. Let me zoom in. Okay, so there's this latch, you get underneath, flip that latch up, and then you can go ahead and pull this back, just like that, okay? <clears throat> there we go, we got the screen out, the original model number information is right there, NT156WHM-T02V8.0, so if you want an exact replacement, that's the model information. Um, there's a lot of compatible replacement parts. And usually sellers, they'll say, they'll like list these models and then sell you something else. So keep that in mind. That tends to happen a lot. Okay, so we'll set that aside and then let's go ahead and open up and grab another screen. It's all boxed up. So let me open that up and then I'll be back. <laughs> That's weird. The screen I ordered came with a random LVDS cable. It's not the one I need. Came with some tweezers and some random toys in here. <laughs> That's weird. I'm not going to need any of that. Some random instructions there. Okay. 
So I don't know why they put instructions here because it's not like the screen is specific um, to the model. But uh, anyways, we're gonna get all this bubble wrap off. Maybe I'll come to fast forward through this part because um, yeah, most people are like, eh, why do I need to watch that? But this is how they pack the screen. And I like to put this in the video just so if something goes on with the part, then I can send it to the seller and show them I wasn't, I didn't damage it. Okay. There's also the two adhesive strips in there apparently. Jeez, they really like bubble wrap this thing. Okay. And then on top of that, they put that um, plasticky stuff to hold the screen onto the cardboard. Very good packaging. So, shouldn't be damaged from shipping, I don't think. The box looks good. Alright, anyways, we gotta get this thing off. Um, oh, they put this tab here to make it easy to peel off as well. Very nice design. Okay, and this, usually I'll like wrap this stuff onto something so I can reuse it if I need to. Um, or to wrap it back on the packaging. So, let me do that real quick here. Alright, I guess I'll continue wrapping it on here. So I have these that I wrapped this stuff on before. So, let's go ahead and do that again. Alright, and I just roll it onto there. So, if for some reason I need to wrap the screen back up and return it, then I can use the same exact packaging that they sent it to me in and I can return that. Again, you can fast forward over this stuff if you want. It's not really part of the repair. It's just stuff that goes along with what's going on with the computer I worked on. So, all right. And maybe I need to actually check this old screen first, side by side to compare it. So, this is the connector here. I'm going to move this aside here. And let's see. What did I just do with that old screen? I set it down. So, oh. Okay, so this is the old screen. So here you go. NT156 WHM. This is N44 version 8. This is T02 version 8. So somewhat same model information. The connector does appear to look to be about in the same spot. And it says compatible for Lenovo IdeaPad 3 15 ITL 05. All right, so they put that there. So it better work. All right, again, I don't know why they included the random um, LVDS cable because that cable isn't part of the, um, isn't for this model. So it's kind of strange. All right, wrap this guy up. I don't know if they just had a random LVDS cable lying around and they're like, might as well just throw it in here. It's kind of interesting. All right. Jeez, they put so much wrapping stuff on here. I don't know how other people get this out. I guess they just use a razor blade or scissor and just cut through it all. But, uh, yeah. All right, so much packaging here. I feel like this should go outside the bubble wrap because this is a lot of unwrapping. But anyways, there we go. Move that over. Continue rolling. Move that over. And continue rolling. I don't know who's going to be watching this part, but if you are, thanks. <laughs> and hopefully you're enjoying it. Anyways, continue peeling this stuff out. We're almost there. Get this all out. Just like 
that over and I think we're on the last yep last round flip it over one more time and we should be good all right so the screen should separate now pretty much done unraveling all this stuff there we go all right here's the screen we get the cardboard aside it's in here they have this that seals it so I guess let's come on okay peel that up be careful uh, when opening this you don't want to put too much pressure on the screen there we go okay and now let's grab oh they even put a foam pad on the LCD panel. Oh, it's stuck in there. Okay, so we'll get that out. There's the adhesive strips, and then there's the foam. Okay, we'll set that aside. There's the screen. Okay, we'll set those adhesive strips there. Okay, let's grab the panel, or sorry, the back part. This does have this on top. Um, I'm going to peel a little, okay, it is uh, matte. I just wanted to confirm that it's the same. Um, we are going to go ahead and grab this. And then we got to reconnect the cable. So easiest way is probably have the screen laying there. And then let's see if we can get this lined up. Might have to unroute this cable here to have a little bit extra slack so it's easier to work with. Make sure that the pins are face up when you do this. Uh, you don't want the flat side face up. So let me actually zoom in and see if I can show this better. Okay, so you want the side with the pins faced up there. Okay, you don't want this flat side. All right, so let's see if I can do this while holding the thing up. It might help if you have someone to help hold this up. But, uh, all right, I will grab this. And we gotta line that up and get that in. Oh, this is kind of tough with just one hand while holding the other thing up. Okay, so hold that in place. Kind of get that in. Yeah, this is tough to do with just one hand. Because you do have to kind of tilt it slightly. All right, let me see. How can I do this? I'm gonna, um, let me zoom out. So I'm going to try and use the hinges. I'm going to hold this and kind of fold the hinges a little bit. Oh, make sure you don't smash any of the wiring. All right. And I'm going to fold the hinges a bit so that way it can hopefully act as like a stand a little bit, kind of, <laughs> sort of, not a hundred percent, but there we go. All right. Oh, sorry. Now it's actually blocking the view, but let's see if I can get this in. Because if I can't even get this in, then there's no point. I, is this connector a different size? Maybe it is. It seems like it might be slightly smaller. Oh no. Let's see here. Is it slightly smaller or something? Am I imagining it? might be very slightly smaller that's not good the connector might be very slightly smaller so this is the original one so if I get this connector in yeah this goes in easily so I can easily line that up and pull that in as you can see but the replacement one, so I'm going to set this aside again. Replacement one. I can get half of it, in, I mean one side in, but then the other side won't go in. So, that's not good. We're going to have to return the screen and the customer is going to be in trouble because they needed this for school. I'm going to let them know, um, but basically I do have to find the right screen and then yeah, I'll be back. So that's it for now. Um, I'll see you guys in a bit. You'll probably see this in a few seconds, like right away. But yeah, for now, I'm going to have to see what to do about the screen situation. All right, bye for now. All right, I'm back, hopefully this time with the right screen. So let's go ahead and 
take the tape out here. This box is pretty thin, so hopefully the screen's okay. Box looks okay, but sometimes if there's not enough padding, it might get damaged. <clears throat> okay, especially since they put screwdrivers on top of it. Let's see here. Okay, so we got this. <clears throat> See the screen is okay. Okay, so here's what the LCD panel looks like. Alright, and let's see, NT156, did I keep the old screen here? <clears throat> here we go, NT156, WHM, WHM, T02, T02, version 8.0. So, same exact model, so we should be good. As long as the screen is good, we should be fine. Okay, so let's go ahead and grab the back panel. Okay. Alright, so here's the <coughs> back panel here. We're going to attach the screen on first, and then we'll worry about the adhesive later. Um, okay, as you can see, this one, actually the screw mount is broken, so I might put some JB Weld in there and then seal it up okay because we don't want that to break or the other or any of the other ones broken hopefully those are okay all right <clears throat> let's get the screen into place hopefully these are on right and then we'll just get this cable connected let's zoom in here okay line that up and pull that in just like this Okay, so this one fits perfectly. Latch that down. <clears throat> then we'll flip the screen back into place here. Let me zoom out for you guys. Okay. Just like that. We'll get this cable in. Okay, get the wire back in there. Just like before. Then the screen just plops in just like that. We are going to have to put the adhesive um, back in there so it doesn't fall out. But for now, we're just going to have it like this so we can test it, okay? So we got all of this. <laughs> got this piece and we got the front bezel. Hopefully I'm not mixing up parts from another model. <clears throat> so, yeah, this goes on like that. Okay. And then this can go on top. Actually, the adhesive might not even be needed for this, but uh, I want to test it first. So let's see here. Probably should have only popped in the bottom because now it's going to be tough to get this back out. <clears throat> All right. So I forget what happened before. If it was this way or this way, I think it was this way. Okay. And then we slid it over that way. So, get that in. Alright, is that right? And then slide that over and it locks into place. Okay, good. Alright, let's get the base back. <clears throat> Here, I'm going to have to take this all back out. So, I'm for now not going to reconnect the wireless antenna. So, let me zoom out a little bit more here. more okay let's see here get this into there and make sure these cables don't get damaged get that into there if i remember correctly this one the screw was messed up i should have put jb weld on there earlier because now it's going to take a while for it to set okay oh and these wireless antennas need to go this way <coughs> Okay. For now, we're just going to put one screw on each. I might be putting this upside down. Okay. Oh, this one, the plastic's also broken. That's not good. I got to push down on this. Yeah, the screw mounts for this are all broken, so... I'm a little worried there because if we need to take it out again, it's going to be permanently stuck in there. So I'm not sure how we're going to get around that. 
<coughs> Let's go ahead and put this screw in. And hopefully this one will hold. Because the other one is completely destroyed. Okay. Yeah, we're going to have to like put some JB Weld in there and then put the screw in. Hopefully it will hold in place. But the plastic here is all broken, so I don't know. We'll find out how it goes. All right. Let's go ahead and get the other screw over here. Okay. We do need to wait for the fan as well um, because this fan is having issues. But I guess for now, we'll just put it back in temporarily. Line it up. <clears throat> Let's put these screws back in. Okay. <clears throat> this one. All right, then we got the battery. I know I'm doing this like upside down and kind of far, not zoomed in, but we just got to make sure it's working, right? I'm going to pinch this in. Um, I can actually just hold the battery now, but uh, to get this, we do need to swing that into there, okay? All right, let's carefully rotate this and see if it powers up and if it works okay. Push the power button. Okay, the fan is spinning. This actually sounds okay right now. Alright, the fan just stopped spinning. Is the battery dead or is it because the BIOS got reset? No, the CMOS battery's on its own thing. So the power button light is on. <coughs> but I don't see anything coming on the screen here. So it might actually be that this one, the screen is actually completely dead. I see the fan is spinning again. Okay, so it's on. Um, I'm going to, oh, shh, I'm dumb. Okay, let's turn this off. My bad. <clears throat> I didn't even connect the screen cable. I don't know how, that miss, how I missed that, but okay. Let's go ahead and get the battery out pop this thing back out okay we're gonna have to drain the power I'm holding the power button again for at least 15 seconds again this is very important when you're putting the screen cable in okay so we'll give it another 10 seconds all right okay let's go ahead and plug in the screen now so I don't know how I missed that <laughs> Okay, I was too distracted by all the broken hinge screws and stuff. So this, make sure it goes in all the way. Okay, it does, the wings need to go in underneath the connector. Then latch that down. Okay, we're going to push this cable in. And, come on. It's so easy to put back in. There we go, pinch that back into place. All right, let's get this battery back in. Pinch that back in. Slide that over, slide that in. Okay, now let's hope the screen works. Okay, power button light is on. Fan is spinning and there we go. Okay, so this is going to work. I'm going to have to do some work on the hinge screws and stuff. And we do need to put the adhesive strips back on there. But it looks like we should be good to go. Alright, so let's go ahead and fix those hinge screw mounts. Uh, we are going to have to shut this down first. So let me shut it down and I'll be back. See you guys in a bit. Alright, so I shut it down. Let's go ahead and disconnect the battery again. We're going to have to take the screen back out. So let's get this lifted and wiggled out. 
get the connector back out. Okay. Again, I'm going to hold the power button for 15 seconds to drain residual power. We're going to have to see how we can fix that. Okay, so let's see here. Okay, so to fix this, I'm probably going to mount the screw onto this first, then put JB Weld on it, and then push it down into place. Um, this one, I'm going to have to put JB Weld underneath, and then put a screw in, and hopefully we can get that going. Um, I might have to do this and then let it set overnight before I put it all back together. So let's go ahead and disconnect this and the cable down here again. Okay. This one is tricky. There we go. All right, let's get the screws out for the hinges again. that these hinge mounts are all going to be broken soon and they put these metal thing on top so it makes it harder to do um, but anyways let's go ahead and see if we can fix that first so I'm going to lift this up and get that screw out oh that's going to make it harder because it's underneath this piece okay so there's this plastic on it, so we're going to take that out. And we're basically going to fill the area around here with JB Weld and then put the screw into there. So hopefully this will be doable. And the other thing I'm worried is these other plastic ones are probably going to be brittle and falling apart soon as well. So <clears throat> we'll see. All right, I think this one was also bad, so we're gonna have to take this board up. That one screw. Okay, this up and out of the way. And yeah, we're gonna have to somehow get some JB Weld into there. And then we have the one in the screen as well, so lots to repair here. Let's go ahead and get this back out. Okay, go back to the screen, slide this back over so we can take this piece off. Okay, let's take this back out. Technically, you don't even need the adhesive to hold the screen into place because this one has all these clips holding it. So, yeah, we don't even really need the adhesive, but we'll just put it anyways because it was in there. Okay, let's flip this over. Come on, let go. Okay. Gotta be careful not to put pressure on the screen. That's why I use my fingernails and not pry tools. Because I can pull straight up without prying against something. Okay. Okay, there we go. that out okay so there are some little pieces of plastic here we gotta get out all right if I remember correctly the adhesive strips were here and here so we're gonna basically have to lift this up put the adhesive strips in and then put it back down so let's see can I rest this on something here I guess let's disconnect the screen and we'll put it back later Okay, so we'll disconnect the screen. We got the adhesive strips here. Okay, so it goes towards the outside. So just like this, and then we'll just drop that all into place. Perfect. All right, then the second one. That there. If you want, you can even tuck it underneath these cables to get it a little bit more secure, but alright, here we go. And we'll just oops. Okay. 
here. Drop that down into place. Stick it down. Good. All right. Let's go ahead and get the screen back mounted on. And then we're going to put some JB Weld in there. Okay, so this piece, line it up. And get that into place. Okay. Click that down, perfect. Flip this back over. Oop. Okay. Line up the bottom with the little red rubber pieces and then lower it into place. Good. All right, make sure to push it down. Don't push too hard because you don't want to crack the screen. All right, get that all lined up. All right, let me see which one was broken here. Yeah, that one is broken. So we probably need to pull it out like the other one. Yeah, this one is broken. So let's pull this up just like that. You can see it just came out. So we're gonna use JB Weld to hold those in place now because the screw mounts don't work well. Okay, so clean that up. <clears throat> All right, let's get the JB Weld. What did I do with the plastic pieces here? Right, let me get the stuff I need and I'll be back. All right, so I'm back. We're gonna mix up some JB Weld here <clears throat> and we gotta use it to fix these two as well as the other two that are broken on the other part. So let's go ahead and mix some up here. black one okay <clears throat> hopefully that's about equal and we just kind of mix it all together all right, straight up. So we're just going to fill up the little gaps in here and then we're going to cover it with some plastic wrap so that it doesn't ooze and stick on everything. Okay, so we'll get this here. This cable might be a little tricky, but I'll hold it out of the way. Okay, and just get all of that in there.
All right, just like that. I'm gonna need some plastic to stick there. So usually I just use some thin plastic. You can use like saran wrap or something, um, but I use this stuff, okay? Whatever you have. Okay, so I'm gonna cut a piece here. Just take this plastic, move the cable out of the way, put that on top. Okay, just like that. And we can go ahead and put the cable back in place. All right, we're gonna do the same thing with the other side. Okay. JB walled into there. Okay, get more. It helps to kind of pull on it to raise up the hinge a little bit. I think whatever plastic they use here, it's like doesn't age well. It goes brittle with the way these things are breaking. Mm -hmm. All right, there we go. Same thing, we're going to cut a piece of plastic and just cover that so it doesn't ooze out on everything. And that will make it so we can take it out later if we need to as well. Okay. Right. We'll just keep that out of the way and drop this on top. Oops, got it on my finger. Just like that. Put that on top this off I don't want that to harden on my finger <clears throat> okay so the screen we got all set up we're gonna go ahead and peel off the protective layer now so you want to peel it pulling like this don't pull straight up you want to roll it off like this so that way it's not putting stress or pressure on the screen okay so just peel it like that there we go Okay, so next thing we got to do is put the bezel on top. So this is why we covered the glue so that the bezel won't get stuck when we go and put this on. Okay, line it up, push it down, click it into place. You can see it squeezes out some of the JB Weld. Okay, so continue working our way over. I'm just pushing down on the outer edge to click it into place. That basically makes the thing rotate like that when you push it down, okay? All right, so there we go. We got that in. Let's go ahead and get this piece back on. Make sure this is all in place. Okay, get that in. Okay, hopefully, did I put it upside down? I think I put it upside down. Does it go this way? Does it? Or did I have it the right way the first time? I might have had it the right way the first time. Okay. okay. Get that all lined up. That all lined up. There we go. Slide that back over. Okay. <clears throat> so there we go. We got this all into place and secured. Next thing we got to do is the base on the palm rest. Okay. This is going to be tricky. I don't know how we're going to do this, but uh, we'll try. All right. So 
I'm going to put some JB Weld in there first. Oh, looks like there's a broken piece in there already. Kind of want to fill it up a little bit. Let's get that loose broken piece out. Okay, toss that. Some more in there. Okay. We're going to want to put some tape over this hole so the JB Weld doesn't go into there. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. It's a very small piece that we'll need. If you don't do this, then JB Weld will go in there and then you're not gonna be able to put the screw in, so keep that in mind. Okay, I just cut a tiny square and I'm gonna stick that on the bottom, just like that. And then you want to cut around it. Okay, cut the stuff around it so there's not too much tape sticking out. Hopefully this will be enough to prevent the JB Weld from flowing into it. Okay, I'm going to use some tweezers to hold on to it to place it in and drop it there. And then we're going to have to maneuver it into place. <clears throat> like that. Okay. That one should be okay now. I'm going to put a little more GB Weld around it. Weld around the screw thing. There we go. It's all bundled up with the JB Weld. I don't know if you can see that. There you go. It's interesting. It's similar color to the actual case. So, <laughs> Okay, so we got that in. This side, we're going to have to see how we can do that. But basically, we got to get JB Weld in that little gap over there. Yeah, there's not much room to work in there, so I'm not sure how I'm going to do this. And if you're not careful and get it in the power button, you're going to have some problems, so. <clears throat> Got to make sure it only goes into that screw. But this probably, I don't know, it might not hold too well. We shall see. All right, so hopefully that's enough. I'm going to have to use a napkin to wipe off the excess over there. Okay. So, oh, it's on, on this piece. I don't want it on there. Ah, get back out. Okay, got to clean this off now. Okay, there we go. Let's drop this back in. Okay. <clears throat> we'll get the one screw back up here. Sorry, I know this is a very long process, but gotta show what we gotta do to repair this thing. Okay. So we'll get that over there. 
let's go ahead and get the screen back into place. It's going to have to set for a while. Oops. Okay, get this over here. Pull the antenna wires out of the way, as well as the LCD LVDS connectors. Got to pull this further back. There go. And get this one in. Okay. It's oozing out. That might be, that might get the screws stuck in there permanently, but we'll see. Okay, so we're going to get that. We'll get this guy. Okay. Good. Alright, then we'll get this one. This one's going to be a bit tricky. I don't know if the screw will even go in all the way. Yeah. It's getting stuck. Okay, it's getting to where it's just spinning around non-stop. Let's clean the JD weld here. Sometimes what you do is you can put some pressure on it and it might help. But uh, it looks like it's just spinning around, so we're probably going to stop there until the JD weld can set. We're going to go ahead and put the screw over here in. Perfect, and then this one's probably going to have the same issue. Let's see. Can we get this screw in all the way? No, nope, it's just going to keep spinning. Yeah, so we're going to stop there for now. Let's go ahead and close the screen up. I'm holding and pushing on the hinges themselves. Like that. Okay, now we can go ahead and get the cabling in, routed properly. Flip that latch up. We'll get this cable in. There's some junk going in there. Okay. Make sure the wings go past and you can see part of the cream colored connector, connector there. Okay, get this one lined up and push that in. Pinch that into place. Wireless antennas back over here. Okay, let's flip this over. I don't know how, I'm probably going to need to get more JB Walden there, but I can't. So, I don't know. <laughs> the hinge is kind of in the way, so. Push it down, huh? Nope. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to even be able to get this back out. How can I do this one? Let's see if I undo this screw here. And if I can use the pressure or friction from the screen pulling away from it to do it. So we're going to close this side and then it should pull against here. And oh, I don't think that worked. Nope. So how am I going to get this? I have to get it back out again. And get this screw out. I use the flat head again because this is too big. What about this one? Nope, we gotta use the flat head. Okay, let's try this one. This repairs way more difficult than expected. Okay, that one's done. Let's try this thing. Okay, that's working. All right, so we got that back out. <coughs> Now let's go ahead and I guess lift the hinge back up again. Okay, there we go. We can lift this out. Get this screw out. We're going to have to put some more JB Weld in there. How do I get this?
this done. We're gonna have to get a bunch of JB Weld into there to try and get it to hold that piece in place. Okay, this one bent, but this side won't. I don't think I'm going to be able to get that one in. This off. Let's clean it up. Okay. okay. <clears throat> this will get this back on. And I bent that slightly. Okay, get that in. Lower the hinge back down. <clears throat> how I'm gonna get that one to stay in place to screw it down there's no way to access this like area down here on the side and that's normally I would put some pressure from the side in there to get to it but this piece needs to go under there so I have no way to do that so only thing I can do is hope that it's set properly in the right place and then wait for it to completely set All right, we'll get that one in, get this one in. This guy's gonna have to wait, but oh. <laughs> What if I put pressure up on it while I'm trying to screw it in? I think it's just gonna make it not work. Let's see here. No, I don't think that's going to work. Is it working? No, oh, actually, maybe. Kind of, not really. Once we get to the too thin part, we're not going to have a way to keep prying on it to do that. It's getting tighter. Try the really thin one. It's really annoying. I think that's as good as we're going to be able to get it. I don't know if the JB Weld is enough in there to harden for me to screw it in later. But uh, this one, same thing. We're probably going to have to wait till it completely sets before we can even screw that in. Because as we turn it, you can see it just kind of flows it around it. just gonna have to wait and hopefully it'll get better okay so this one I'm gonna have to leave overnight and then we'll come back to it I guess all right let's go ahead and get these wires antenna wires did they go under this piece I don't remember but uh, I guess we'll just put it back in there slide these under the fan the fan is going to need to be replaced i think so um but you can already see how to replace that from that come on come under <laughs> 
Alright. And basically this will go on back on here. the antennas and click them back in I don't know why I'm finishing putting it back together because I am gonna have to take it all back apart again so I'll probably stop there for now we're gonna get a new fan and then swap that all out later all right and we'll see if this screw tightens so I'll see you guys then bye for now all right, so the JB Weld was a success. As you can see, I can tighten this screw all the way, as well as this one. All right, so these screws are now all the way in, and we can also take them out if we need to. But uh, I'm just going to leave that in there, okay? <sighs> Make sure it's nice and tight. Okay, screen's connected, wireless antennas are connected. Let's go ahead and put the battery back in. Okay. <clears throat> that lined up good make sure this is straight pinch that back in all right get the connectors all back into place let's go ahead and screw these screws back in as well for the battery okay all right then we just got to get the bottom cover back on and we should be good to go all right last screw here cover, line it up, click it all back into place, alright, make sure clips go in, oh, why is this side no one go, here we go, okay, for some reason, this one clip doesn't want to go down, oh there we go, okay, all right, so now we just got to get all the screws back in, and we're good to go. I don't know why I mentioned about the fan. I, I was actually talking about a different model laptop. This one, the fan is okay. But, uh, yeah, let's get this back together, and we should be good to go. <coughs> all right, and hopefully this video helped you guys out. If it did, again, please make sure to like, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade or repair their devices as well. And if it helps you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. Uh, if you can't, it'd also be very helpful if you could watch a few of my other videos so that the YouTube algorithm knows to share my channel with others. Um, other than that, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. All right, let's get these last few screws in. up should be good all right new screens working and that's pretty much it thanks for watching see you all in the next one all right let's drop this bye